I saw the ball. I said, is this ball real? Just imagine all of those famous people who have held that ball. Just gives you chills. Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, Gary Cooper, Ronald Reagan, Charlie Chaplin, Walt Disney, Judy Garland, Marilyn Monroe, Abbott and Costello, John Wayne, Jane Mansfield, Marlon Brando, just to name a few. That is the most amazing baseball I've ever seen, because not only does it have the iconic names in Hollywood, but it also represents baseball and the entertainment industry and how they come together. Baseball has always not just been a game or a sport or a business. It's been my way of life. Last year, out of the 81 games that the Dodgers played at home, I attended 75 of them. And during the playoffs, I didn't miss a single playoff game or a World Series game. In my collection, I have hundreds of different items. This ball is special to me because not only do I love baseball, but I love the theatrics of baseball. I went to a fundraiser at Jane Seymour's house. Part of the night was they had a live auction, and this was one of the highlights. I've never seen anything close to that. It had to be when the Dodgers had these all-star celebrity games. I can't imagine the criteria to put those names on the baseball because there's really not a foul ball in the bunch. They're all hits. Having those signatures is extremely special on a baseball. For me. <laughs>baseball is the great American pastime because everybody has played it in some form during their life. A bat and a ball is a pretty simple premise. I think the ballpark is a perfect reflection of what's going on in our country or what's going on in the industry at the time. In the 1930s, baseball fans in Southern California could enjoy the Hollywood Stars minor league team. Way before the game started, all the seats were filled and hundreds of fans had to stand on the field. The Hollywood Celebrity Game actually starts around 1938. The Hollywood Stars had a promotions director named Danny Goodman, and so he had a great Rolodex, and he thought, well, if we're going to work for a team called the Hollywood Stars, we probably should have some Hollywood Stars at the ballpark. And so starting in 1938, you would have these exhibitions. There are the two captains, Frank Sinatra and Andy Russell. At this moment, they're announcing that all attendance records have been broken. One of the things that was really missing from the West Coast was having a Major League Baseball team. Now, when the Dodgers come in 1958, they don't hire many people. They pretty much bring their entire organization, but the one hire that they make is Danny Goodman. And all of that great star power from the 30s and 40s transfers to the Dodger name. Opening day in Los Angeles for the Dodgers, April the 18th, 1958. And they played at the Coliseum. You have a bigger audience, uh, but you have the same premise. Stars coming out for an exhibition game before a ball game. People would get to the ballpark hours early just to watch it. Just imagine Dean Martin in one of those all-star games and showing up for his at bat in a limousine and he steps up to home plate and suddenly he gets an idea and he beckons to the waiting car and suddenly there's a hostess with a tray and a martini. Archie Bunker, how great would it be to see him as an umpire yelling? Well, he was an umpire, he was yelling. And so whether it's Phyllis Diller, the comedian, fanning Billy Barty, who is on a stretcher, or whether it's uh, Milton Burrell trying to get in any photo, it was sort of like organized chaos because you just didn't care who won the game, you just wanted to see people having a good time. Dennis Gilbert's ball is amazing because when you look at those names, so many of them have either a baseball or a Dodger connection. You look at Frank Sinatra, he made a baseball movie, 1949, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, but then he becomes friends with Lasorda later in life and sings the national anthem for his very first game in 1977. Marilyn Monroe, 
You might say, well, married to Joe DiMaggio, and so there's the baseball connection, but she actually made her last public appearance before an Angels game here played at Dodger Stadium in 1962. And then you look at Ronald Reagan, baseball connection. He was a Chicago Cubs announcer in the 1930s. They had spring training at Catalina, and he decides to sneak over to the movie lot to try to get a screen test. And a few years later, he's George Gipp, win one for the Gipper. That's how he gets his start in acting through that baseball job. Some of the others, Gary Cooper, my favorite baseball movie, 1942, Pride of the Yankees, which was film local. Abbott and Costello, who's on first, the most famous baseball routine of all time. Have I heard the expression that all ball players want to be movie stars and all movie stars want to be ball players? Not only have I heard the expression, I lived that when I was a sports agent. Every one of the ball players wanted to be on TV shows, do commercials. A boy has more self-respect when he's clean shaved. I tell him to use a Gillette razor, Al. That was the fun part. You'd have the ball players making cameo appearances on television shows, whether it's Don Drysdale, Wes Parker on The Brady Bunch, Al Ferrara uh, was a guest on Gilligan's Island. Those early years of Los Angeles, Hollywood and the Dodgers just went hand in hand. Yeah, even the Three Stooges were there. April 18th this year, the 60th anniversary of the Dodgers being in Los Angeles. There's still Hollywood pregame. You may not get the turnout because not all the filming is centric in Los Angeles anymore. But the one thing that doesn't change is the very fact that when they are in town, they do want to come to games. During the World Series, you can guarantee that you're going to look around and you're just going to see tons of stars. Kind of looks like the Academy Awards in comfortable clothing because they're just like any other fan uh, wanting to see what's going to happen. And that's the allure of a ball game and that's the greatness of a place like Dodger Stadium.